كتاب الله دستوري كتاب الله دستوري وخير الخلق أسوتنا لسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم We make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his infinite mercy, kindness and compassion make this Ramadan of ours a Ramadan where we reconnect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Humanity at large is facing trying times. It's not only the Muslims. Humanity at large is facing challenging times. We spoke from the beginning of our discussion regarding the practice and the tradition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how Allah brings about change. And we are witnessing some of these changes in the times that we are living in. In order to continue with our discussion, today is inshallah going to be our final discussion under this theme of this ayah of Surah Al-Imran wherein we speaking about how Allah brings about change. Let's listen to this ayah again, the entire ayah, reflect on this ayah with its translation and then we will come to the conclusion of our discussion, insha'Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. ولا تهنوا ولا تحزنوا وأنتم الأعلون إن كنتم مؤمنين إن يمسسكم قرح فقد مس القوم قرح مثله وتلك الأيام نداولها بين الناس وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء Faint not nor grieve, for ye will overcome them if ye are indeed believers. If ye have received a blow, the disbelieving people have received a blow, the like thereof. These are only the vicissitudes which we cause to follow one another for mankind, to the end that Allah may know those who believe and may choose witnesses from among you. And Allah loveth not wrongdoers. We also discussed, or in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commenced by giving us glad tidings. That do not be grieved, do not be saddened. You will be on the high pedestal, provided you are believers. The highest position, both spiritual and physical, will be for the Muslims. This will take place as Islamic moral values come to rule the world. We also said that you and I might say that we do have Iman, but is our Iman to the standard required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the standard that Allah requires? And in order to understand the standard that Allah requires from us, I would like us to go to another ayah of the Quran Kareem. You know, one of the best ways of understanding the Quran is understanding the commentary of the Quran from the other ayats of the Quran Kareem. This is an ayah of Surah Anfal, ayah number two. Let's look and listen to this ayah. Ayah number two of Surah Anfal. What does Allah say? Ayah number two and three. What does Allah say? What is the standard of Iman required from us? Listen, Allah says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innama al-mu'minun al-ladhina idha dhukira Allahu wajilat kulubuhum 
وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ They only are the true believers whose hearts feel fair when Allah is mentioned and when His revelations are recited unto them, they increase their faith and who trust in their Lord. Who establish worship and spend of that we have bestowed on them. What did Allah say? Certainly the believers are those whose hearts are filled with awe when the name of Allah is mentioned. When his verses are recited to them, it makes them more developed in faith. And in their Lord they place their trust. There are certain conditions that Allah has mentioned here. Firstly, when the word of Allah, when they hear the word of Allah, their hearts begin to tremble. Their hearts begin to shake. By the mere hearing the name of Allah, they realize that they are supposed to be the servants of Allah. They're supposed to be obedient to Allah. The mere consciousness and the hearing of the name of Allah brings about in them the spirit of obedience. Then Allah said, also there are those when the, the ayats, the verses of the Quran are recited to them. It makes them more developed in faith. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The third, and in their Lord they place their trust. They don't place their trust in anything else. They, these are the first three standards that we need to fulfill. Let's look at some of these standards. When the name of Allah is taken, their hearts shake. Do we take the name of Allah in our businesses and make false promises? Are we fulfilling the standard that Allah requires from us? Do we continue deceiving when we hear the name of Allah? When Allah's ayats and verses are recited, does it develop faith in us? Do we place our trust in Allah? Listen to what Allah is saying. Let's reflect on this ayah again. The standard upon which is the iman that is required by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Innama al mu'minun al ladhina idha dhukir Allah wajilat kulubuhum wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun al ladhina yuqimun al salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun They only are the true believers whose hearts feel fair when Allah is mentioned and when his revelations are recited unto them, they increase their faith and who trust in their Lord, who establish worship and spend of that we have bestowed on them. Stay tuned, inshallah, when we return, we will continue with this discussion. <laughs> When the ayats and the verses of Allah are recited, they develop in faith. When we listen to the Quran, when we recite the Quran, do we develop in our faith? That's the question that we need to ask. If not, then we are not measuring up to that standard. Do we place our full trust in Allah? If not, then we are not fulfilling that trust. You know when we talk about developing faith as we listen to the ayats of the Quran, let me relate an incident. Kaab ibn Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu is sitting in the Prophet's mosque. 
and he senses that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is coming close to him, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells him, "O oh Kaab, continue reciting the Quran, for I have been commanded to listen to your recital." He says to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "O oh Rasulullah." You have been commanded to listen to my recital. Did Allah mention my name in the arsh? And the Prophet ﷺ says, yes. Allah has mentioned your name in the arsh for your recital of the Quran Kareem. Understand, when we recite the Quran, Allah is speaking to us. And when Allah is talking to us, is it developing our faith? What is our condition when we listen to the Quran? What is our condition when we recite the Quran? And then a third condition, وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And they have faith and trust in their Lord. These are the first three standards to measure our Iman. Then Allah says, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ The fourth condition. And the fifth, وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ they are those who establish salah and give away from what we have given to them. Salah. What is the condition of our salah of the believers today? The Prophet wasallam is lying on his deathbed. Whilst lying on his deathbed, he is ill. He hears a knock on the door. Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam is standing at the door. And Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam is said. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam observes the sadness on Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. And the Prophet asks, Oh Jibreel, what is the matter? And Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam responds, O oh Muhammad, O oh beloved of Allah, I was created for this noble task of bringing down revelation from Allah from the time Allah created the first man, Adam. And my responsibility was bringing down this revelation, the Quran, to the last prophet, which is you. O oh Muhammad, the time has come that Allah is calling you. I have with me Israel, who has been commanded by Allah that you do not need permission, seek permission to remove the soul of any being, but Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You may not remove his soul until you seek his permission. And Israel alayhi salatu was salam is saying, I am here with 70,000 angels to welcome you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam looks at them and he says, My ummah, what is going to happen to my ummah in my absence? What is going to happen to this ummah of mine when I am not here? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds. The angels say to Allah's Rasul, Welcome, come away. Allah is waiting for you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam turns towards his ummah and turns towards the Masjid and Nabawi sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he says, As-Salah, As-Salah, As-Salah. Be guarding your prayer, guard your prayer, guard your prayer. I will wait for you at the pond on the day of Qiyamah. The fourth condition of our Iman. If we fulfill this condition, then maybe we will be measuring up to that standard. Then Allah says, يُنفقون, And they spend. They spend generously from what Allah has granted them. And Allah comes to the end. Those are the believers in reality. Remember, لا تهزنوا أنتم الأعلون Do not grieve. You will be the uppermost. إن كنتم مؤمنين Provided you are believers. Now who are the believers? 
أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا These are the believers in reality Those who hearts tremble when they hear the name of Allah Those whose iman develops when they receive the ayats the Quran are recited before them Those who have the trust in Allah Those who establish the salah And those who spend from that which was given to them These are the believers in reality for them, there are high ranks with their Lord and forgiveness and dignified provision in the end of times in which Allah will use Imam Mahdi as his instrument. There will then follow a time of great beauty, plenty in abundance, known as the golden age. As in other verses of the Quran, Year two, Allah makes the global domination of Islam conditional. The global domination of Islam conditional upon true faith and avoidance of disobedience. Now, we see in the world what is happening. We see the establishment of a khilafah, claims of an establishment of a khilafah. And rightly so, this is the zeal that we all have as believers but there's a condition Allah has placed a condition if you want to be on the uppermost antumul alone in kuntum mu'minin provided you are believers and what is the standard of a believer listen to these ayats again in conclusion listen to the first few ayats that we had discussed and commence this, this, this discussion with of surah al imran Verse number 139 and 140 and with a conclusion with Surah Anfal, Ayah number 2 and 3. We conclude with this very profound and significant and important discussion that addresses the times that we are living in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who fulfill the criteria of true believers. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Innamal mu'minun al-lazina idha dhukira allahu wajilat qunubuhum wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatuhu zadathum imanan wa ala rabbihim yatawakkanun al-lazina yuqimun as-salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun They only are the true believers whose hearts feel fair when Allah is mentioned and when his revelations are recited unto them, they increase their faith and who trust in their Lord, who establish worship and spend of that we have bestowed on them. In conclusion, we spoke about the Qudrat and the power of Allah, what Allah is able to do, and we have no doubt about what Allah has declared. But there is another aspect that we need to keep in mind. And that is the sunnah of Allah, the tradition of Allah, the sunnah and the tradition and the practice by which Allah exhibits his power. And we spoke about how Allah exhibits his power. And we spoke about the timetable and the calendar of Allah. Allah provides every nation this opportunity of managing the resources of the world gives them authority and power to see whether they use this authority for the welfare and the general good of people. And it was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa 1400 years ago when the world was faced with a similar problem that we are facing today. Although ours might be in a more sophisticated way. But the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fulfilled that standard that was required where they were qualified to manage the world. Allah gave them authority and governance. And Allah giving them the authority and governance, they ruled for a thousand years. And then when we fell from that high pedestal, when we no more fulfill the requirement, and when we no more fulfill the requirement, Allah removed us from that position. 
This is also in accordance to the practice of Allah. Allah then gave this position to another nation, the European nation that never in the history of mankind were granted this opportunity and benevolence. But within 300 years, the world was faced with a total different situation. We also said that the world is changing rapidly. Islam is becoming the dominant religion in the world. We made mention of the statistics of Europe and America. We spoke about the fertility rate. And all of this brings about the conclusion that within the next few years, there will be, Islam will be the dominant religion. We also spoke about the predictions of the Prophet wasallam about the blockade of Iraq, about the blockade of Syria, and about the blockade of Egypt that is going to come still. And we then spoke about the screening process that Allah will exhibit before he brings about this change. And this is not, no coincident, no coincidental, it is not coincidental. The incident of Badr, the incident of Talut and Jalut, these are not coincidental. And finally, we, if we are going to be believers, then we will be on that high pedestal, provided we are believers. And the standard of belief is what? When we hear the name of Allah, our hearts tremble. When the ayats of the Quran are recited before us, we develop in our iman. We have full trust in Allah. We establish our salah. And we spend from that which Allah has given us. This is the definition. These are the true believers. When we fulfill that standard, that is when Allah will provide us with governance, authority, and khilafah. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah give us the understanding of the Quran. We have come to the end of this theme which we have spoken of for the past few evenings. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. كتاب الله دستوري وخير القلق أسوتنا لسنته جلا نوري لهدي الحق أرشدنا كتاب الله دستوري وخير القلق أسوتنا لسنته 